Hi, I'm Michelle, Director of Educational Content and Programs at Shape America. And if you wanna learn more about health and physical education, you are going to love Toy Talk Tuesdays. And I'm not talking about these kinds of toys, I'm talking about Teachers of the Year. Shape America Teachers of the Year represent the best adapted physical education, dance, health and physical education teachers in the United States and you get to hear directly from them. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to comment below with the tips and resources you want to hear about most. If you're interested in learning about how to become a Shape America Teacher of the Year, just make sure to click the link right here below. Thanks so much for watching. And welcome to Toy Talk Tuesday. My name is Julie Frank. I'm the executive, executive director at Spark, and I'm delighted to serve as today's host. Today's segment will focus on best practices for teaching health and physical education with physical distancing in a virtual setting. I am joined today by Brian, Allison, and Eric, and I will give them each an opportunity to briefly introduce themselves. Hi, thanks so much for having me. My name is Brian Hull. Um, I am the 2020 National and Central District High School PE Teacher of the Year. I currently teach at Bruce Randolph School in Denver, Colorado. Hi there, thanks for having me. I'm Allison Relier. I am the 2020 Eastern District High School Physical Education Teacher of the Year in upstate New York in Gilderland High School. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric DeVault. I am the 2020 Western District High School Physical Education Teacher of the Year. I teach in Mexico, Missouri at Mexico High School. As members of the Shape America Teacher of the Year community, you have a unique platform to share your expertise, talents, and leadership with health and physical education teachers across the country. We are so proud of your accomplishments and appreciate you participating today. I'll now turn the program over to Brian to kick us off. One of the first tips and tricks I wanted to share with you all was my sample lesson structure. And my reason behind this was I want my virtual classes as similar and as closely aligned as what my classes are in person when we're out of this pandemic. So as you can see here, my normal sample lessons within the COVID remote learning platform is consisting of a attendance and do now sequence. Um, I go over the daily objective. I'll introduce and explain new or existing material. And then I release my students through the gradual release model to where the students are gonna be doing independent work. And then I'm able to check in with students to breakout rooms or um, private chat. And then furthermore to that, um, I try to allow as much student choice as possible for my students. So mainly that is through their, their physical activity choice. So throughout this lesson, um, if students want to continue working on their health academic work, they can. But I also allow them to choose to opt out of that. Um, and then they choose an activity they want to participate in. And that becomes asynchronously and then their job is to fill out a weekly activity log for me for accountability purpose and goal setting purposes. So my start of the lesson consists of a do now and the end of a lesson consists of an exit ticket like I do in person. And um, <clears throat> specifically to my do now and attendance example, as you can see on the screen, I have one sample Google form uh, based on what day it is for predictability purposes. And as you can see, most of these align with social and emotional learning purposes, but also some health and skill related fitness purposes as well. But mainly I'm all about the SEL benefits of activity right now, especially with this pandemic. And as you can see, I'm all about student choice, like I said, for physical activity, but not just that, I'm all about introducing some very unique physical activity options for my students. So here you see a Domino's activity challenge to where they're relating Domino's pizza to certain types of activities.
Allison, you can take us away. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity to share um, a couple of resources that I'll be using in my physical education classes this year. The first one is going to be a needs assessment survey. Um, in the spring, when my district went to all remote learning, I felt as if I did not know enough about what my students were dealing with at home. Uh, some were taking care of their siblings. Others had to get jobs to help support their families. And I had plenty of students, like I'm sure many of you have, that struggled with remote learning as a whole. Um, if I knew some of this information ahead of time, I would have done some things and approached some of my teaching, I think, differently. Uh, the survey will definitely help to guide me better to understand what my students are managing at home. Some examples of what I'm asking them include if they are caring for any siblings, um, if their at-home work environment is quiet and productive, if any of their parents or guardians are working home remotely and if that impacts them at all, any technology strengths that they may have or any needs that they uh, are gonna need help with throughout their remote learning experience, and then the access to resources and equipment that they may have um, to conduct some of the physical activity that I'm gonna have them do. I'm also gonna be asking them if they want to schedule any one-on-one -on -one time with me to express any concerns that they have about our physical education class in a remote environment or just about the school year in general. By conducting the survey, I will be able to make more informed decisions when delivering instruction, creating assignments and assessments, and meeting some of their social um, and emotional needs. The other resource that I'm going to be doing this year um, is going to be a project-based learning assignment, and it's going to be called the Genius Hour Activity Project. Uh, the purpose of this assignment is for each student to pick one activity that they have always dreamt about trying. Um, I know we all have probably something that we've always wanted to try, but maybe we just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, students are going to research their chosen activity and present their completed project to their classmates. A Google Slides template is going to be shared with them on Google Classroom, and their project must include pictures and a video of that activity, a brief history of the activity, along with citing any influential people who have contributed to the success of that activity, any needed skills and equipment, any natural resources or facilities in which they can engage in this activity, expenses that they need, and an overall budget. And finally, they need to do a written reflection as to why they chose this activity. Um, I'm gonna pull from a real life example um, for them. When I decided to become a certified scuba diver, it was important to learn all about the areas of being engaged in that activity successfully. And I want my students to go through the same process to be their own activity genius. So those are gonna be some of the resources I share this year and I'm gonna send it on over to Eric. All right, thank you, Allison. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about some tips and tricks about uh, for best practices of using technology. And for me, this is from experience and from research. And um, for me, I think choosing one platform, one type of tech is the way to start. Master that one piece of technology, whether it's Google Classroom or your other LMS that you might be using. And once you get really, really good at that piece of technology, then starting in adding in other pieces of technology, whether it be um, something like a, a video delay for students to use on their own through a, a web extension, or whether it be clickers online. Um, however you uh, would like to incorporate technology, just take it nice and easy. Uh, there's no reason to get into a rush. Keep it simple for yourself and keep it simple for the students. As far as planning your lesson goes though, I would say if you're a lecture type person, you might want to consider using the lecture as an asynchronous activity. And then when the students are with you, you can really dive into a, a deeper discussion with your students about what they watched you teach about um, in your video, because there's, not a real good reason to just lecture in person uh, with the students there. You want to be able to interact with them and make uh, build community just like you would in your real classroom. 
you also need to figure out how you want to plan your, your lesson out. How are you going to monitor the questions? Are you going to do that in real time? Or are you going to have them put all the questions in the chat box and, and answer them at the end of the class or even after the class is over? Um, will you dedicate a certain time of class as a, a Q&A section? Will you use breakout rooms and small groups so they can have discussions? All those are great ideas uh, rather than just lecturing the whole time. Do you want to have your students on camera all the time or not at all or all the time? What activities might you choose to have cameras on and cameras off? And what will you do if a student has a technical issue? These are all things that you should be trying to uh, think through ahead of time so uh, you're ready and the students are as ready as possible. And then finally, I'd like to end up with will you record the session or will your district allow you to record the live session for those students who might have technical difficulties and or can't make the session at that time for whatever reason they have to be absent. It's always going to be a great resource if you can uh, record the session, but if not, um, you'll, you'll be able to figure out a, another way to, to get the students that information. To help you out a little bit, I do have two resources. Um, I'm a big Google fan, and you can always check out my um, YouTube channel. I've got a bunch of videos there for you to use and to help you incorporate technology and other things. And then I also want to show you a resource that I've been referencing throughout this little talk right here. It's this article called Teaching Practices for Your Virtual Classroom. Thank you very much. On behalf of Shape America and the Shape America Teacher of the Year Partner Network, thank you, Brian, Allison, and Eric for sharing these ready-to-use activities, tips, and tricks. Be sure to visit www.shapeamerica.org to check out our bi-weekly Toy Talk Tuesday segments for more great resources from our Shape America Teacher of the Year community.